your weekly podcast where you have two professional real estates giving you our perspectives on the market, national, local to New Hampshire, and some tip and, tips and tricks for agents. I am Jessica Preventure, broker owner of the Pro Homes Group with Lair Realty Partners, and here is my co-host, Keith Valancourt. Hello, everyone. As always, we're going to kick it off with national news. I found this to be pretty interesting. Did you? Yes, I did. I thought this was very interesting. You know, I, well, I mean, it's kind of something that we've probably noticed a lot, the trends, every, everything getting more energy efficient, right? Is that what you talked about? The, yeah. The, 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 uh, the home energy retrofits. As, as yeah, the... I thought that what was interesting <laughs> to me about this was the combination of we have a lack of inventory, we have a lack of new construction. So they said, I think, 21, 21 million single-family homes in the United States that were built before 1980. Which, can you believe, I, I was born in 1980, so yeah. maybe let's not yeah, think exactly. too hard about how long that, that was. It's a lot of houses. <laughs> but it's a lot of houses. So we have this shortage of supply, and yet we have this increase of consciousness regarding our earth and, and energy efficiency and those kinds of things. And so this new retrofitting these old homes to become more energy efficient that's yeah. what i thought was fascinating yeah those older homes are using the most energy yes. and almost everything on them now is is completely different how they how they build Correct. Those houses today from the floor up the windows the doors i mean i can't tell you how many houses i go into in the basements and there is no external door between the basement and like let's say the bulkhead yeah, and, and it's just like, and those bulkheads are usually like attached to the foundation after the fact. Yeah. And it's like those bulkhead doors are kind of yes. like loose and open. You just know that the, the heat is cranking right up. A hundred percent. And never mind water, never sure. mind rodents. Like, uh, but you see in new homes, they have a real exterior door. Yeah, you see the spray foam in every corner. Yes, yeah, every exactly. nook, every cranny. Exactly. So, of course, when I think about sustainability, I think about solar. Do yes, see? I do, actually. I think about solar all the time because my electricity keeps going up. <laughs> and uh, I want another mini split at my house, and that just means more electricity. So I actually have been thinking a lot about So a lot of people, you know, you see it. Now it's like they blend almost right in. You're like, oh yeah, that has solar. Yes. You don't even know. And I know a lot of people are, when they're looking for houses now, they're, they're asking for solar. They yeah. want those, those energy efficient. Or homes. is it in a position where it gets enough sunlight? So we sure. just installed solar. Oh, nice. Yeah, so we just, we just in, prompted by the high, higher energy costs. Of course. Um, so our panels are on, our inspection has been done. They just haven't been turned on yet. So I'm anxious to see, but, but we purchased our panels. Okay. So like we fully own them. If we sell the property, the, the new owner gets the panels, all of that. I recently showed two properties here in New Hampshire that had the oh. least panels. Ah, you know? Saw, and the person, well, so, and tell me if this is true or not, but I, I heard that the person that originally does the lease is always responsible for that contract even after the property is sold the person that originally has that lease is still responsible for that payment throughout the entire i did not know that that's I what i mean know... so i've been looking i'm trying to look into it for myself but yeah. then you you don't know because you bought it but i I'm, I'm definitely interested to find out if that's the case. well so there's a couple things well we bought it um we did use an energy loan yep. um, and you get a huge energy tax credit, yep. something like 15 so percent, uh, 15, yeah, I, think 30? 15 I don't remember, but it's a lot. So it like cuts yeah. it in like half. Um, so there's that the lease, the ones that we've seen, and I'll, I'm not going to comment on the company that I'm referring to sure. because I really don't, I know only what I know. The lease can be transferred. Oh. But these leases are like 20, 25, nice. 30 years. And the price, your monthly payment <laughs> goes crazy. up like almost 3% every year. So it's like this one house, they had just put the panels on six months ago. And it was a 25-year lease, 25 lease. So you're like committing to that. 
you can buy out the leases, but then that particular vendor, my understanding is, no longer services them. Mm. So like, Love then the what do you do? Yeah. There's all this stuff. So, you know, I, I mentioned all this and I can't find, of course, because I want to find it, I can't find it, the exact percentage um, that, th that was quoted. Uh, oh, it says right here. Uh, that buyers will pay up to 15,000 yeah. more for a solar powered home. And I would say here in New Hampshire, it's probably more. <laughs> it depends because no. the, you know, my, both of my buyers on both those separate homes mm -hmm. walked away, meaning we didn't put an offer on the home because they didn't want to get into this lease situation. It just might not be right for that particular client. So both of these clients were excited about the idea of solar until we started looking at the lease. Mm. So it's like they maybe would have paid more for solar, but Oh, I remember what I was going to say. And the other thing was it was, it was only going to cut the, the electricity bill. It was like, 60 percent so you know if you do if you are on that lease some of the some of the uh, payments were like four or five hundred dollars a month and then if you think you're only getting that 60 so you still have an electricity well that was bill. the argument and then you're kind of adding that on top and then if you're not going to be in the home for as long as you say then those type of things don't always like saying add up um sometimes it's great sometimes if you can get 80 90 percent based on the amount yeah of and that's what we get. did we were able to get 100 plus percentage of ours so oh, we, wow. we purchased our panels so we should be able and we bank um we sell back so in the okay i'm so we bought our panels so they cost x amount of dollars whatever we have a monthly payment to pay back that loan you know we could pay it all in cash then you'd have nothing but um and then when we get a lot of sun in the spring and summer any unused energy gets sent back to our electric company and then we can buy it back from them in the winter at a much discounted rate so we can buy it back from them we don't get the full dollar for dollar necessarily but that means maybe in the winter we have 20 dollar payments yeah. versus and or I, maybe not and i saw like uh, on my quote that i had gotten um recently i think it was i was making back 15 percent every year on my money on my, my money on my return so I thought that was, you know, depending on how you how you look at that, whether it's worth it or not. But yeah. especially in your case, if you can get, you know, even, yeah, I mean, I even think like eighty percent, it I hear is is great. So yeah, I mean, I more. suppose we have we're self facing, so we get sun yeah. all day long. Um, but we, you know, ultimately our our bill, right, is going to go from five something hundred dollars a month to two hundred. It's like yes, please, and yeah. then when we sell the house the proceeds from the home will pay off that loan you know it's yep. kind of rolled into the house so it's a i don't know i think it's something that's becoming more and more common and i think that the government mm -hmm. is gonna you know have to be doing additional incentives if we're gonna meet our goals for 2050 and they're dishing out a lot of money I, you know those, so i can't imagine those are gonna keep coming but this is where your real estate agent is a value to you, even if you're not considering buying or selling right now, right? We're doing this every day. We're talking to people. We're making connections with these particular solar companies, with inspectors, with this, and we can help direct you to the companies that might be right for your situation or give you contacts or let you know, hey, if you purchase them, you're going to get up to 15,000. If Great you point. don't, if you lease them, hey, that could be a, a, a not good in renovation. And most likely we've been through it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so we Very will good. Good definitely stuff. keep an eye on that. Um, so I was super excited about this. this yes, new, I, new Hampshire I saw thing. this too. I didn't even, you know, it's one of those things you don't really think about and then it comes across and you're like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. I like that. Yeah, well, I was nervous about it, right? So literally today it's may 2nd so earlier this morning um the new hampshire supreme court ruled on the town of conway versus scott kudrick case and that case was specifically about the town of conway against the seller um, in regard regards to short-term rentals so things like airbnb vrbo things like that um, and it was the whole state was really because in other states this is really shifting across the country and I know here in New Hampshire, I was very carefully 
watching to see what was going to happen because you know it's such a great investment opportunity oh absolutely and so if the towns in new hampshire start saying especially in places like conway laconia sunapee the ski areas the lake regions hey you can't do this what does that do for 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 that supply up there and you know does it make prices so the good news i think it's good news is that the um, state ruled in favor of the seller said he, you know, we have to, I love this, government cannot and should not arbitrarily remove a person's fundamental property rights. That's right. Renters are using the property for residential purposes, same as the owner, like cooking, sleeping, entertaining, etc. So yeah, I, I agree. And I think, like you said, I think that's a great idea to um, supplement income, you know, build equity, you know, a lot of different things. And um, the fact that this one gets passes is just a, obviously a step, but hopefully that trickle down effect will, will come. Yeah, past. I mean, I think that then it sets precedence sure. for, for other towns. So basically, the argument was that the owner is using residentially zoned property for commercial prop prop purposes. <laughs> Um, but he's really not right he's renting it and the renters are using it for residential and the d amount of time that they are using it is really irrelevant sure um, it, you know it, it, they use another example um, this was written in the brief the duration for which a property is used does not impact whether the property is used for residential yeah. purposes so for example they use the a sandwich shop they said a sandwich shop is used as a sandwich shop. Whether the shop is open seasonally, just in the mornings, a couple weeks sure. a year, it doesn't really matter how the length of time, um, which I think is is totally true. Sure. Like the the purpose of this is residential, not commercial, is what's happening inside the property. And he wasn't selling things or using it sure. for commercial prop purposes inside. He, it was residential purposes. Whether you're renting it for a month or six months or owning it, it's 100%. all being used for the same exactly. thing. Exactly. So that's great, great news. news. So if you are thinking about possibly buying an investment property that you'd like to Airbnb or um, use as a vacation property for yourself and only rent out part of the year, please give us a call. We know the towns that'll let you do Absolutely. it. Um, so that's super exciting. Yes. I, that's kind of like, I want that to be, I, I'm looking forward to when I can have an investment property that's like a vacation Airbnb. Yeah, absolutely. I do it, you know, I do it with my own house if I could. <laughs> Where would like, you go? If I had like a lake house or something yeah, like yeah. that, when I, you know, I'd plan on spending a couple of weeks there, rent out my house for a couple mm -hmm. weeks there. Why not? So, so we're going to buy a lake house? Sounds good. Let's go into it good together. Luck. Good luck. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, guys, here's our um, tips and tricks for agents. So um, Inman wrote um, a couple weeks ago uh, the seven words you should never say when negotiating, um, but can't, hope, if, no, not, or try. Um, but now they're, he, they've done another article, follow-up article, with 10. <laughs> 17 total words. That you no, cannot 10, use. 10 more words. 10 On more top words. of those seven words never use. That's All right. right. So what, I, I heard you reading this article, so I, I heard you <laughs> laughing at yourself. So what are the ones that really, that yeah. you're like, oh, no. Yeah, so some of these, you know, some of these I use and they, they give some good reasons on why not to use them. Like, uh, like honestly and sorry and, and, and problem and fair. Fair is a big one. I'm always thinking, yeah, that sounds fair. I very try to be fair. But when negotiating and, and talking, like you keep, there are these, these 10 words that they give you here, don't use them. And they give a lot of good um, explanations on why. Um, for instance, Sorry, don't don't say sorry. Nobody's nobody's ever sorry. Don't be sorry. Say I made a mistake. What can I do to fix it? Like you know something that small. Um, you know it's important to apologize if you make a mistake. But using the word sorry in a negotiation will make you appear weak. Um, so you know it's it's little things like that. And there's you know there's ten of them. Was there any uh, that stood out to you that? Yeah. So for so funny enough, um, you know I am very 
conscious of authenticity. So I sometimes get uncomfortable with like articles like this because I'm like, oh, it seems so contrived sure. to like not say this or not say that. And I think you should be gen genuine. So, you know, the sorry one, that one shocked me because, right, I'm used to if you do something wrong, you like own it, you mm -hmm. apologize and you move on. Um, I think what was interesting is that in a negotiation, there is a power dynamic happening that you maybe don't have in other interactions. Yes, yeah, settings, yeah. And so I think it's less about like don't say sorry and don't own your mistake and more about positioning it, right? Sure. Um, you know, in relationships, you're never supposed to say sorry, but sorry but it kind of negates the sorry um so like in this case i was thinking you know they said i made a mistake what can i do to fix it um or i might say like i apologize for the confusion but here's the da -da 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 -da, or whatever um the other ones that jumped out at me were the always never impossible again very much words you're not supposed to say in relationships, sure. you know, because they cause <laughs> yeah. fights. Like you always oh, leave your shoes out. Relationship is very much like a negotiation. Uh, yeah, yeah, sometimes so, it yeah, is. I, I agree. Yeah, I can see a lot of that. Um, yeah. So I think I personally try to live in the gray. And if I've learned anything even more than relationships in real estate, there is no absolute. <laughs> there, sure. there is. Well, here I am saying there's never. <laughs> there's there's no always. Absolute, right? There is no absolute. It's you know, rare, there's an exception to every rule or an exception to every Good situation. Right. So I would certainly um, maybe steer clear of those. And nothing's really impossible. I do say things like typically um, uh, in typically. place of always, like usually, typically, instead of always or never. Maybe, maybe it's one that they got on this list. Yeah. Yes, and I always think instead of saying maybe, I'll say like, it might be possible. Oh, sure. You know, um, we could see if we could, we can present, we can counter, you know, it's a conversation. So there is, you know, you never know what the person on the other side is going to say. And I do try not to say cheap. Cheap, yes, I do, yeah. I don't like the way that sounds anyways. No? No, I just don't like that. It's, a, it's one of those words. Like, a, like a hooker? She's cheap? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> you know, or you think no. like cheap jewelry? I mean, like or... cheap, like built cheap, or oh. like cheaply made, like <laughs> not cheap, but, but same thing. Yeah, yeah sure. like Super low hard. quality. Yeah. You know, you want to say yeah. more affordable. Sure. Less expensive. Less expensive, yeah. um, more manageable. Anyway, let us know if you say any of these words. And they all everyone says that. <laughs> just can, not during negotiations or relationships. There, right? There you go. Just not which are during, the same. Which are the same. Which are the same, right? We all want something from the other person. We love hearing from you guys. We'd love to hear your examples or situations where maybe you've said some of these words and they backfired, or maybe you've had some experiences with Airbnb or um retro environmental retrofits you know the solar more information leaders. you can give us the better good solar companies yeah we'll shout them out here and we'll get quotes from them <laughs> and you'll get quotes from them all right guys take it easy Thank and we'll much. see you next week bye everyone bye